Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. So we're looking at the number of mergers and acquisition transactions per quarter by target location. So whether that's in the U.S. or Canada, looking at the first 11 weeks of 2021, seeing a record amount of capital raises by Canadian companies or cannabis companies, particularly in the U.S., and this cash is funding an acceleration of mergers and uh, acquisition activity, probably in part from a lot of investors fleeing Canada. A lot of that speculation has kind of um, been squeezed out. So looking at with the recent pop in the after the elections, um, some of that has been taken away. Some of that profit is off the table now, but still looking at the U.S., um, just California alone being the fifth largest economy in the world has a lot of opportunities in the U.S. with more states kind of coming on board and looking at uh, whether or not this administration is going to approve it uh, now or in the future. Uh, I think it's inevitable that the U.S. at some point is going to. And so that's why you're kind of seeing a lot of investment kind of flowing into the U.S. We're seeing U.S. companies being the target of 41 out of 56 closed transactions that Verdian tracked in the first quarter of 2021. So at the current rate, they're expecting approximately 70 to close uh, for the full quarter. Verdian is also expecting the U.S. to continue to be the dominant target for mergers and acquisitions activity, given that it's far greater potential and profitability. However, Europe could see an increased focus given its potential market size. Germany is huge. If the U.K. opens up, that's an opportunity. Eastern Europe, countless folks. So lots of um, good things. We could probably see some of what that might look like if or when Mexico opens up, legalizes, and then all of Latin America follows. I think we'll see um, similar numbers uh, in Europe. But again, it's a, a lot of folks out there. So mergers and acquisitions in the cultivation and retail sector, that's expanded significantly from 2020, but the sector accounted for only 32% of transactions in the first quarter of 2021. That's the smallest percentage of any quarter since they started tracking that. And so that's interesting because MSOs have been the dominant investor preference since late 2018. All of 2019, all of 2020, multi-state operators. You saw what happened with MedMen. That was a lot of hype, and it just crashed and burned into a giant dumpster fire. So some of the better strategies of you know, the seed to sale, vertically integrated opportunities, producers, processors, retailers, that's kind of the new model. That's why people are kind of staying away from Washington State and looking at other areas like California, Colorado, and then new emerging markets that offer all of those. Um, it's just a better opportunity. So cultivation and retail um, have been kind of left aside. And so maybe there's some value to that as some of those um, groups are more willing to capitulate, consolidate, and sell, whereas those were kind of the hardcore advocates, the growers uh, that were really wanting to hold out. Maybe now is the time for them to let that go. Not really sure, um, but I do know that there's an over- over investing in commercial real estate. And I think a lot of people are expecting that to correct. Commercial property has never been more expensive. And yet you look at San Francisco and, and Manhattan and all of these available um, blocks and blocks of real estate. So you look at collateralized mortgage-backed securities and all these other debt instruments that are repricing and not looking very safe. Therefore, maybe some of these investors are looking outside of REITs, you know, real estate investment trusts and looking more at cultivation retail in the U.S. with some you know, speculation behind that. So they're going to expect to see it normalize over the quarter or the year as multi-state operators or MSOs are increasingly using M&As to build out cultivation and retail in newly opened markets. We're seeing a lot of sale leaseback options where they'll go in, an MSO will go in and buy property, plant, and equipment, and immediately sell that to um, you know a lender and then lease it back. So we're going to see other sectors like software and infused products experience the highest percentage of mergers and acquisitions in recent years. A lot of crazy money is coming in. So we're going to see a lot of consolidation. You just have to come back to the talking hedge and find out more. With that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the talking hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't. And I'm out. 
forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.